today at Speedy's Garage we're going to troubleshoot a problem with Orange Crush, our 2009 Dodge Challenger. What we started noticing is a little bit of coolant was coming out of the thermostat housing. So we replaced the thermostat gasket being careful to reinstall the thermostat with the wiggle valve at the 12 o'clock position. And we no longer get any coolant leaking from that area. Now however, as RPMs rise, we're getting coolant out of the overflow reservoir tank. Um, that's usually a sign of some type of combustion pressure getting into the coolant system. So we've either got an intake gasket leak or a head gasket leak. Uh, that's what we're leaning towards. So we're going to do some troubleshooting to try to figure out what's going on to cause that problem. Okay, so we started by firing the car up. We're looking for any bubbles in the overflow tank. There's not any. Seen any bubbles or anything? Coolant's not oily. A little bit of residue on the sides, but the coolant's four years old, so I'm not sure that's indicative of a problem. A little bit of uh, graphite looking material on the sides of the coolant overflow tank. Not getting any bubbles at idle. I've got my assistant in the car. So rev it up just a little bit. More. Alright, that's good. So as you can see, as the RPMs go up, so does the coolant level in the overflow tank. Without the supercharged river even making boost, that's just strictly RPM related. So one more time. Alright, whoa. So as you can see, the coolant will eventually come up and come right out the cap. So even with the cap installed, it'll do the same thing. As you can see, even with the cap on, the coolant's still rising up in that overflow bottle. And just for good measure, I actually did replace the coolant cap, the coolant reservoir cap, with a new one. And I still had the same problem. What happens is, as you're driving and you start getting on the throttle, that coolant will come up and actually come out the cap and make a big mess. So here's a look underneath the oil filler cap. So we can get some light on it. There we go. And I don't really see any milky looking oil. <laughs> Smelling it, it just smells like motor oil. I don't smell any antifreeze type sweet smell in there. So we're not getting any indications there that any coolant is leaking into the oil system. And there's the dipstick of the oil pan. And we're not seeing any uh, coolant on that either. Uh, normally, if there's a head gasket leak, that would be oily, or I'm sorry, milky looking, kind of like a milkshake. We're not seeing that. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do as part of this troubleshooting is I'm going to bleed the coolant system to make sure there's no air in it. Uh, when the thermostat gasket leaked before, I never bled the system, and it's possible there's an air bubble that got in there somehow and could be causing my problem. So, there's a quarter inch Allen hex bolt on the front of the front engine cover and uh, while the engine's cold I'm going to back that out and see if I get fluid out of it. If I do I'm not going to think there's an air bubble but if I crack this open and no fluid comes out there's possible there's an air bubble in there so I'll go ahead and, and tighten it back up I'll fire up the engine let it get up to operating temperature and then I'll just back that out a couple of threads being very careful not to get sprayed with hot coolant or anything until the air comes out if that ends up being the issue. And this is in here pretty tight and it's got sealant on it. Now, I don't have the sockets for quarter inch, all mine are metric. And go figure, Dodge ended up putting a uh, standard plug in this thing. So we'll see what we get here. Okay, let's see what we get. I've got a rag down there just to catch any coolant that might come out. 
Okay, I got coolant, so don't think there's air in the system. I am going to fire up the car and turn the heater on just to be sure. Okay, I bled the system just for good measure. Um, I turned the heat all the way on to full hot, let the car warm up to operating temperature. Um, back that, bolt that a little bit till I got some coolant and knew I didn't have any air and uh, tightened it back up. Obviously, if you do that with the car running, you need to be very, very careful. You have belts and a hot coolant involved with that, so do so at your own risk. Uh, it did not solve our problem. We still have coolant rising in the overflow tank as the RPMs go up. Um, so on to the next troubleshooting step, which is likely going to be a leak down test of the cylinders. Before we perform a leak down test, there's an easier test you can do to detect cracks in the cylinder heads or a head gasket leak, and that's a block test. And what it'll do is basically detect uh, combustion gases in the coolant system. And it'll work on either a radiator or a uh, reservoir overflow bottle like we have on the Challenger. And it consists of some test fluid, which is blue, and this tester. You basically put the blue fluid in this unit up to the fill line, put this bulb on the top, and aspirate it a couple of times, and it will draw air out of the reservoir or radiator and push it through the fluid and if there are any combustion gases present, exhaust gases, the fluid will turn yellow. Uh, so what we're going to do is, is go ahead and fire the car up, let it get up to operating temperature and then perform the test and see what we get. Okay, so we got the car up to operating temperature, we've got the tester installed, the fluid is blue, It's not changing color. So I want to rev the car up a little bit and try it again just to make sure it's not just a problem that shows up uh, when there's a few RPMs in the motor. Okay, so the test passes. We don't see any uh, combustion gases in the coolant system so one more test I wanted to try is to completely remove the accessory drive belts that will eliminate the cooling system the water pump the thermostat and all of that from possibly being the issue uh, you can't run the car long with the drive belt removed because the battery will drain and uh, it's not really good for the power steering but as long as the car is just idling and not ran for too long you can do it with no problem uh, we're going to start by just taking a 3 8 breaker bar and relieving tension on the belt here and then I'll probably take these two um, 14 millimeter bolts out because I've got that supercharger uh, idler bracket in place to get the belt off and then uh, I'll put those bolts back in so everything's sturdy and just fire the car up and see if I still get some pressure in that coolant um, overflow, overflow tank. Okay, well as you saw, the coolant level never changed with the drive belt off, so there's more evidence that we're thinking maybe it is not a head gasket. I am going to try swapping out the thermostat next and uh, test that Jet 180 thermostat just to make sure that's not a problem. Before removing the belt, you want to make sure you have a diagram to follow or take a picture so that you remember exactly how the belt is routed when you want to put it back on the car. So testing a thermostat is pretty easy. You just want to boil some water in a microwave safe dish in the microwave. Take your thermostat, drop it in the water, see if it opens. And this one does. See if I can get you a good shot of that without fogging up the lens. Yeah. See it's open. There's a material inside that as it heats up, it contracts and will pull that valve open. If you pull it out, as it cools off, that valve will close. So 
So this is a Motorrad 180 degree thermostat, which means it will open at 180 degrees. So it looks like our thermostat's working properly. When reinstalling your thermostat, there's a small jiggle valve. You can hear it moving. You want to make sure that that's at the 12 o'clock position because it will let air escape and prevent bubbles from getting in your coolant system. So you want that pointed straight up when you reinstall the thermostat. And on the Hemi, the torque on the 13 millimeter thermostat housing bolts is 200 inch pounds. Make sure it's inch pounds, not foot pounds. You'll break them off. Okay, so the first time we tested the car without the belt on, it was ice cold. I took the thermostat out and tested it, stuck it in some uh, water that had been microwaved. So I know the thermostat's working. So now I want to try the same test again, running the car without the belt on, with it warm, to see if it makes any difference. <laughs> 